All right, so you've probably wondered at this point, why is this thing out in the open like this? Well, this is what we call an open air colony or an external colony. Believe it or not, I get maybe a half a dozen calls for open air colonies, sometimes as many as 10 or a dozen maybe per season. So it's not extremely rare, but it's not really the norm as honeybees usually want a dark and closed environment with a little opening. The thing with the open air colonies, things exposed to the elements, so they do get setbacks now and then, but of course, being in southeast Louisiana, winters are mild, so uh, they can huddle together and uh, generate heat. They'll generate heat, and that that's allows them to survive winter. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, when the winter comes, you know, the, the peas will probably die. But no, they, they don't die from cold. Now, cold, wet air is, is not good for them, but as long as the environment is relatively dry and they can generate heat, they can keep warm and survive winter. So uh, we're using the BVAC today because I'm about 20 feet up and working off of a lift. And the BVAC that I'm using, I help design, it's called the Colin Runner BVAC. It can be purchased from Better B. It's a very user-friendly uh, and bee-friendly BVAC. The difference between, you know, just like a shop vac and a good BVAC, a good BVAC will have a large catch box of some type for the bees to spread out and go up the sides so they're not on top of each other. In really warm weather, they could get stressed and regurgitate. So this uh, setup utilizes a hive box that's being used as the catch box. As long as it's operating, it's ventilated through the catch box and it has a suction regulator on it. And shop vacs don't have that. You don't want to use a shop vac because you just you kill the bees. So let's proceed forward and just want to also add that uh, these bees are very gentle, which I'm very happy about. In case you're wondering about the headphones that I'm wearing, they're not really to protect my ears. Really, I wear them to listen to good music while the BVAC is running. I'd rather listen to good music while I work than listen to a vacuum cleaner going <coughs> on and on and on. So that's, that's the main reason why I use the headphones, folks. That's a nice chunk of honeycomb there, folks. I can't show everything, so that's why I zoomed in so you could see the hive from what I'm doing. But I have a bucket of water that's on the bucket lift. That's just to clean the honey off my tools and my hands. And also I have a tub with a contractor's bag. So I will put the bits and pieces of comb in the bag. And then later on, what I'll do is I'll feed that back to the bees via what's called open feeding, which is done at a neutral location away from your beehives to prevent your hives from getting in a feeding frenzy and feeding off of each other. This section is capped worker brood, which would become females, which most of the bees in a honeybee colony are females. Notice that they're more flush with the surface of the comb, whereas the drone brood to the left of the worker brood is a more pronounced. They kind of stick out more, a lot more. Of course, the drones are the male bees, which only make up about one to 2% of the numbers in the colony. Another nice chunk of honey. So if you look at the comb sections that is really flush with the surface, that's capped honey. It's above all that brood you're seeing, all the way from the top left corner, all the way over to the right side, that's all capped honey. Unfortunately, at this point, I had to shut down my Sony, all because we had rain coming, folks. It started raining, and I had to put the, the Sony up. Wish I would have had the GoPro, because the GoPros are waterproof, and the iPhone is in a case, so I could film the rest of the way with the iPhone. But hang tight, because more good footage is coming, I promise. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but we're all making some progress. I've uh, been vacuuming quite a bit of bees, and of course the thing with the rain, but uh, you could see up top where there's less comb than there was before. Incidentally, I did give these fellas quite a bit of honeycomb, which they, of course, enjoyed immensely. 
this isn't the prettiest comb section that I framed up, but I'll take what I can get, folks, because a lot of times on open air colonies, it's not as much usable comb because they have a tendency to attach, you know, the comb sections to all sorts of things. A lot of times open air colonies are actually on tree branches, and there's usually little twigs and parts of the branches and leaves and all that in it. Really don't get a lot of usable comb, but I'm uh, taking what I can get here, folks. So the next comb section that I've framed up, it's got a little bit of a waviness to it, but it's not too bad. You know, the main thing here is we want to get some brood comb down in our brood box when we set the bees up a little bit later on. The uh, Colorado Bee Vac has a metal bottom that pulls out, and you put the catch box that's going to be full of bees on top of a brood box. When you pull the bottom out, it allows the bees to drop down. You want the brood box down below to have brood comb or a queen, or the bees will just stay up top. This next comb section, although it has a little bit of a wave to it. It almost fills the frame completely and the bee should have no problem connecting the dots on this one. This comb section is by far the best comb section that we framed up to this point. Honeybees build their comb sections individually so you have to take them out one section at a time. A honeybee nest is not a Winnie the Pooh nest folks which incidentally is more of a bald face hornet nest. The Winnie the Pooh nest does not accurately depict a honeybee nest folks. Here's another good comb section that I framed up as you can see. It almost completely fills the frame again. A little bit of wave to it, but it is what it is. Again, our main objective is to have brood comb down in the brood box when we set the bees up so that the bees will drop down from our catch box. So as long as you have brood down in the brood box or a queen down in the brood box, the bees will drop down and the next day I can take my catch box off and then I can use that catch box on my next removal. All right, folks, here's some more progress. We picking at it. It's going to surprise you a little later on when I show you the setup, how many bees were actually in this colony, folks. Big, strong colony. Gentle, gentle bees. I'll take nice bees over mean bees any day, folks. Honeybees never cease to amaze me. This is a perfect example of that. Look how they built all those little wax cells on the concrete bridge railing. What a thing of beauty. How neat is that? And we're just about done here, folks, so I'll be bringing you an update on uh, how the hive's doing in just a second. All right, folks, I just pulled a frame from the uh, open air colony and uh, then we moved from the top of the, the uh, overpass. Let me show you, there's a frame right here. We got eggs and larvae. So, uh, Queensland, uh, up a storm doing her thing. You can get, let's see here. Seen some of these eggs. Uh, I think that's coming in. Inside of the green circle, there are cells that have eggs in them, if you look carefully. Let's see. Um, maybe over here. Am I seeing any eggs? I'm seeing them. I just don't know if you want. They're doing fine, you know, they're, they're still very peaceful, you know, doing their thing, so. Well, folks, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Another one from JP the Bee Man. I'm having a fantastic day, and I hope you are as well. Until the next one.